Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are back out here with the wood boiler uh, prep work. We are getting an outdoor wood boiler delivered to heat our home. We're gonna beat the propane costs in, uh, this year and, and hopefully into the future and uh, heat our house solely with wood. That's the plan. Wood boiler is coming soon. It's actually from the time of filming here. It's uh, just about a week away, week and a half away. So I've got some, some, uh, some final work to do here before we can get this thing dropped off. So let's uh, dig in and uh, start with getting some electrical done. So I've used these kinds of boxes before. This is considered or called an in-use um, outdoor rated box. So um, it's basically it'll seal to this. It's got a, um, a pad on the backside so it won't let any water or anything like that in. Uh, you can use any kind of duplex type outlets. The you know if you have like a generator input or a, or a 220 you know twist lock or something like that you could use. Um, what I'm going to do is just a regular. Uh, GFCI and these are in use because you can actually put a, a plug in here and it'll run out the bottom and it still stays dry so you can actually um, leave something plugged in like Christmas lights or something like that out here now this is this is actually just going to be a, a utility outlet out here this is just going to be for you know whatever like I said Christmas lights we, we sometimes run in this area or if I'm out here want to hook a light up or you know anything like that um, we'll use this outlet this wire right here goes back down and it's going to get fed up back into the uh, uh, outdoor wood boiler um, utility panel and then it'll get tied in so this is our power coming from the house with this old strange uh, wire and then uh, this is going to go out to the uh, wood boiler as far as i can tell this is all 14 gauge coming from the house and so um, i'm just going to double check the breaker in there i actually think it has a 20 amp breaker on it but i'm going to switch that out for a 15 so make sure uh, this is all safe. So there's a couple different ways to attach these things, but this one does have four screw holes. And I'm going to drill out. There's lots of different ways to attach these. I could have run this the main screws right from you know that holds the outlet in place right through here and put the outlet behind it or I could have mounted the outlet actually tabbed on the inside of this but I actually just drilled these little spots out and that'll match right up with the four uh, spots on this box that I have so that'll help to secure the seal all the way around it only comes with two screws which is actually surprising so I luckily I, I always save uh, all of my extra electrical screws in a jar, and so I had a few extras that uh, that'll fit here. All right, let's see if we can uncover these pipes from my foam experiment. So I made an interesting discovery that cost me another hundred dollars. What I thought was PEX pipe, I, I've been around plumbing and things for quite a many years. I used to do heating and cooling for, uh, for years and done a lot of this type of thing before, but I haven't, I don't deal with PEX often, honestly. Um, I tend to, to do everything with copper. And so when I saw this stuff, I assumed it was some form of PEX, some older kind. You know, I haven't seen this color before, but I just assumed, oh, it's probably some older 
older kind of packs, but it's, I'm sure it takes the same fittings. And so I went and bought uh, one inch um, fittings to extend this. I need to extend this up into my area here uh, to connect to the boiler. And I got these one inch PEX fittings and they're, they're way too small. So I went around town asking everyone for inch and a quarter PEX fittings. <laughs> and everyone thought I was crazy. No one had any inch and a quarter PEX fittings. So what I actually found out is I went downstairs in the crawl space and finally could read a label on the side of this pipe on the inside of the house. And this is actually something called PEX L PEX. P-E-X-A-L-P-E-X. And I have never heard of this before. So maybe some of you guys are laughing because you've seen this before, but it seems to be pretty prevalent in Europe um, and for older in-floor heating installations. Uh, it looks like they use this stuff quite often. So it actually has, I don't know if you can see it, there's actually an aluminum uh, or metal uh, insert, like ring inside the pipe wall, and it makes it very, it, it bends and stays. Um, and it also, as, as far as I understand, it helps with insulating the, keeping heat in, in these pipes. So it's great for, for this kind of application. But it takes these special fittings they have a um, kind of like a compression ring that actually grabs the the pipe and, and pinches it down as you tighten it and it has these little o-rings so these fit inside the pipe this goes on here first like this and then this goes in here there's actually a ream tool that that widens this out that i have not been able to find so we're going to try to do it and try to just do something like this here. All the way in there. Seems to be in there. I bet you that's why I'm bleeding. I think I hit that screw head. That's... So it looks like that's going to work. Of course, we'll have to test for leaks and all that once I get the inside of the system finished and we'll run some water through everything, but it um, seems to be pretty pretty solid uh, fitting here. So all this just to adapt to PEX. <laughs> These adapters I had to get online, they didn't have this any of this stuff at Home Depot, the PEX Al PEX um, compression adapters. These were, I think they were 12 bucks each, maybe 13 bucks each, plus, sh plus some shipping. On the four of them, Th these were were uh, were quite expensive for four of these. So I need one here, here, and then on the other, there's two more pipes. I've got two loops that I'm running here. So it's four of these I had to buy. Then I had to buy four of these, and of course, Home Depot only had two in stock, so I had to order the other two on Amazon. I wait two days uh, to get them instead of running around. Um, that's just how I do things generally. So just for these two things right here, we're talking about twenty-six dollars, probably twenty-eight dollars for each one of these connections. Um, it's over a hundred bucks. Just to just to convert this to, to PEX. Well, obviously not getting this grounding rod out of here. I'm not sure what gauge wire this is supposed to be for a grounding rod, but I have some of this number 10 wire here, a few strands of it. So let's just put a couple of these in there. And then I'm just gonna bury all this directly under the ground, under the slab, and I'll run it over the ground rod will just be underneath the whole unit. I don't know if that's okay or not.
Well, it's not a professional uh, prep job, but it's certainly a good DIY one. Uh, so I threw a little bit of uh, a pea gravel in there just to help smooth out uh, some of the areas and compact everything down uh, as good as I could. I have dug this uh, deeper trench on the side and thrown some rocks in there. I just wanted to help because the, the ground uh, kind of dips off here uh, on quite a slope actually down the hill. And so I just wanted to give the, the cement a little bit of a lip right there to help get down to solid ground. Um, some of this was actually fill. As I scooped out this side, I was filling it in over here to level it out. So I wanted to get down to, to virgin ground that hadn't been disturbed, just solid. This is uh, what we're gonna do. It is uh, six inches thick. Uh, I've ordered one yard of, of concrete, actually one and a quarter, and hopefully we'll be here tomorrow. We'll pull this in here, smooth it out, and I am not gonna do any rebar. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. So um, it's just gonna, gonna be what it is. <laughs> So I've got my two loops here, this one and this one. Once I get this all poured, I will, I may end up cutting this PEX right here and putting a 90 on it. I was hoping this would bend a little bit better and it's not. So what I might do is just bring these in to like right here and put a 90 on each one of these so they can come straight up. Electrical is all hooked up and working. Uh, I've got wires run in here and uh, ready to hook up when, when we need to. So, so I think we're just about ready. It's all poured and it's smoothed out pretty good. Most of this you won't ever see, so I'm not, not worried about polishing it up and making it perfect. If it were the floor of a shed or something like that, I would spend more time on it. You can wet it down after about an hour and then you know run your trowel over everything and kind of smooth it out a little bit more, but this will be just fine. This this side I am still a little bit worried about, you know, this this ground settling over here, so uh I was, if I would have known how much extra they, they brought, I asked for a yard and a quarter and they ended up bringing quite a bit more than that. Uh, just, they always do, they always put extra in. And so I was worried about being short, so I ordered a little extra and then I ended up with too much. But I would have, uh, if I would have thought about it, I would have kind of dug this down and built another little pad right here because my plan is to put a bin on this end of the wood boiler that I can throw a couple days worth of wood in so I can drive the the tractor right up here and just dump loads of split wood in a bin and then it's right here the end of it will open and I can walk right off um, this is this pad right here I poured extra 
So the front of the boiler will be here. I've got cement in front of it and I can just walk right around here, grab wood out and throw it in and fill it. So another cool little bonus was all the extra. Um, they always, whenever you have uh, concrete delivered, they always want to clean out their truck. Uh, and so it's nice to have a spot ready for them to clean out. They'll spray out all the extra and dump because they don't want to take it back. I had them pour it down this uh, <laughs> side of the driveway here. Um, it was way, it was so much extra. I wish I would have been able to use it somewhere, but so he poured it all down here in this trench, which is eroding away at our driveway because all this water washes down here and runs down the edge here and it keeps washing all this away. So now we've got a, a little cement kind of gully here, which will help help with some erosion. Then you get the boiler delivered. I've got some work to do inside. I'll take you guys along for that. I'm going to show you how all the inside of this looks next. We'll uh, test all the lines. So we're going to test our loops. I have to figure out which one I want to be the in and which one I want to be the out and label them. We'll do that in, in another video. I'll take you guys inside and show you the heat exchanger for the for, for the forced air furnace and the uh, heat exchanger for the water heater. I'll show you both of those. And then we just need to get the boiler delivered. Let me know what you guys think of the install so far. I'd love to hear from you guys. Of course, don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Put your questions and or comments, suggestions. I take all kinds of feedback. You critics out there have uh, probably have some things to say about how I poured the slab and some other concerns. Actually, I'd love to hear those things. So let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything I need to do that in your opinion uh, to, to fortify this better or, or change anything before we get to any further in the project. So I always take that feedback, um, good or bad. So leave it down below. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when we post new content. If this is your first time here and you're not signed up, subscribed already. We'd love to have you follow along. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.